How on earth does Tekken for the Super Nintendo exist? The Tekken series is an integral reason for the immense success of the PlayStation in the mid-90s. Itself a massive accomplishment that thrives to this day, fans are anxiously awaiting the 8th mainline entry from this classic fighting game series. In the age of the original Sony PlayStation, Tekken really did feel like the King of Fighters, with the franchise being the worthy successor in pop culture relevance to Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat that came before it. Two fighting game brands that had dominated during the 16-bit era. Speaking of which, imagine my surprise when I learned that you could also play Tekken games on hardware from a generation before the rise of the PlayStation. So with all of this said, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Tekken games for the Super Nintendo and more. Yeah. Ah yes, fighting games. At the start of the final decade of the 20th century, these were big business. Street Fighter 2 would famously dominate arcades along with its unintentional stepbrother of Fatal Fury. There was no doubt that players were hungry for sprite-based and dynamic fighters with creative characters, and the genre was quickly becoming more popular than ever when Mortal Kombat entered the scene. The game which challenged the newly established formula with brutal violence replacing light-hearted creativity. In this fast evolving medium, another game would look to change things and would contribute towards creating the standard we see to this day. Sega's Virtual Fighter, created by Sega AM2 and designed by Yu Suzuki, was a pioneering title that hit arcades in 1993, and despite a limited control scheme of punch, kick and guard, it would impress arcade goers with the whole new gameplay mechanic not truly seen before in a fighting game, a third dimension. Players could dodge in and out of the screen and perform ringouts, but it was the impressive visuals powered by Lockheed Martin's technology that would inspire developers and Sony to focus on the relative 3D powerhouse of games that the PlayStation would focus on cultivating. Seeing the success of Virtual Fighter, Namco would release the inaugural edition of their own 3D fighter, Tekken in arcades, followed by a PlayStation port in less than a year. Itself a 3D texture mapping test program, Namco soon found themselves hiring developers that worked on Virtual Fighter. In collaboration with the burgeoning PlayStation head, Ken Kutaragi, eventually leading to the fighter being developed with PlayStation hardware in mind. By 1995, 3D fighters on disc-based consoles were the dominating target for coin-op fighters, but that doesn't mean that 2D consoles were left on the curb. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Street Fighter Alpha 2 would receive home ports, and the Super Nintendo would get impressive original titles, such as Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension and Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, showing that the aging hardware could be impressive if done right. Sega though would toss out a title that many people to this day continue to ask just why. Virtual Fighter 2 would be officially demade for the very aged Mega Drive and Genesis, with hand-drawn sprites replacing polygonal models, reduced voice samples and removing Lion and Shun. Sega also demade the title for the Game Gear as Virtual Fighter Animation, meaning that yes, even Tech Toy would release it on the Master System in Brazil. Yes, that's right, you can't make this up. Virtual Fighter for the Master System was created as an officially licensed Sega game. What even is this world? While Namco was clearly following Sega's lead when it came to 3D fighters, powered by Sony looking for their own Virtual Fighter killer, did the old house that Pac-Man built pull the same stun and give us Tekken 2D demakes on aged hardware for all the developing world? Well no, but to quote Dr. Ian Malcolm, you know what they say, life uh, finds a way. So with that said, let's dig into the incredibly unsettling world of 2D Tekken. As it seems that some developers were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. The Tekken games may have been advanced polygonal fighting games that only the power of the arcade or mighty Sony PlayStation could handle, but that wasn't going to stop developers working in places like China and Taiwan from creating Tekken games that could be experienced on much cheaper and more rudimentary hardware. This brings us to Taiwanese company GameTech, who would take it upon themselves to not only develop a Tekken game that could be played on the Sega Mega Drive, but they would choose to go even one step further and crazier than that. These guys wouldn't simply give us Tekken for the Mega Drive, but instead Virtual Fighter 2 versus Tekken 2. That's right, they gave the world a crossover game that Sony and Sega were simply too afraid to make. 
Well, at least that's what it seems they intended to make anyway, as due to poor English, we instead got VR Fighters vs Taken 2. But close enough, I guess. This bootleg title would combine select cast members from the titular Virtual Fighter 2 and Tekken 2, with Akira, Pai, Wolf, Lion and Shun representing the Sega cast, with Hihachi, June, Lee, Paul and Kazuya being the Tekken representatives. But that's not all, as the Taiwanese lunatics wouldn't stop there, because as a bonus, Honey and Barn from the Fighting Vipers would also be made available, essentially making this a more ambitious crossover than Super Smash Bros. Released on the Mega Drive of its iconic but rapidly out of date 3 button controller, this crossover would feature a control scheme based on Virtual Fighter with A being block, B being punch and C being kick. As quality as a bootleg demake of an arcade polygonal powerhouse can be on hardware that originated in the 1980s, Game Tech would incredibly use this game no one asked for as a base to give us two more 16-bit Tekken games. So let's look at the first of these with the Sega targeted Tekken special. As for this strange abomination, controls are kept like they were in the Virtual Fighter crossover, but the actual Virtual Fighters and Fighting Vipers would be removed from the cast, which raises the question, who would replace them? In their absence, Yoshimitsu, Nina Williams and Marshall Law would be added to this roster. While still conceptually aiming to be an accurate enough interpretation of Tekken 2, most of the cast here have been given bloody fireballs, which were much more of a Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat mainstay over these polygonal powerhouses. Instead of attempting to adapt the Namco soundtrack to the Genesis hardware, many of the tracks are instead taken from two very different Sega arcade fighters, Sonic the Fighters and Fighters Megamix which had representation in the earlier release, so at least that makes some sense I guess. But Sonic the Fighters? Were they hoping to add a few Animal Warriors to the mix? Who knows? Tekken Special would not just be released for the Sega Mega Drive, but as the title of this video suggests, we would also get this game on the Super Nintendo. For the Super Nintendo, the developers alternatively titled the game Tekken 2, but many of the assets and elements are similar. While Nina and Marshall are absent from the game, the controls are actually more aligned with the arcade title, thanks to the extra face buttons the standard Super Nintendo controller has, with two punch and two kick attacks. For the SNES release, music from the previous Virtual Fighter 2 vs Tekken 2 remains, but additional tracks are added from Rockman X3, the impressive late in life Capcom platformer. This release would find itself heavily distributed in the South American market, even garnering two reprints that updated the box art, and even with a different cracked ROM in a Super Famicom shell. While technically impressive that something resembling Tekken on the 16-bit consoles could be achieved, the actual content is limited. Particularly and disappointingly accurate for an arcade conversion, players are limited to a simple arcade mode, going down the roster of fighters from left to right, and a versus mode that tends to stick the second player character with Paul. Still, I have to say, Paul is still the best fighting Paul, and I prefer him to both the Paul brothers. Paul over Logan Paul any day of the week. In regards to some positives about this game, at least players can make changes to the amount of rounds, difficulty and time limits when playing this one. Stuff that's often reserved for arcade operators and their dip switches, but then again, I can't imagine a great deal of people exist out there who are playing this one competitively enough to care for such things. Sadly though, arcade mode is all we get, which is a shame as a simple survival or time attack mode wouldn't have involved much new coding. After all, Tekken is explicitly known for side modes, so this would have been a nice touch. Tekken Ball and Tekken Bowl are praised in the modern era, and even the PlayStation port started with a rousing game of Galaga to mask for loading times. But here, we just get arcade mode. This disappointingly ends with nothing more than the words congratulations. Which for me, frankly, wasn't quite good enough, as this isn't a true bootleg unless it ends with a message instead saying congratulations. I want my full congratulations, goddammit. As critical as I am being though of this ridiculous title, it's hard to say that the game doesn't at least pay some attention to detail. Menus, the HUD, the player select screen all accurately follow the guidelines set in the original arcade and PlayStation versions. Given the longing the tooth Genesis got a port of Virtual Fighter 2, it doesn't seem too out of the question for Namco to have likewise tried getting a few more dollars out of the 16-bit systems that weren't really in direct competition with the PlayStation. Although, if I'm honest, I have no idea off the top of my head whether or not licensing agreements would have permitted such. 
As for the Taiwanese coders, these developers' ambitions may have actually been greater than the time they had been allotted. A look at the cutting room floor of the games shows that Jack 2 was clearly intended to be played, with multiple colours and a full moveset being found with a basic RAM address change. Additional music and a stage were finished and available but not in use, and a look at the text strings in the code shows graphics for Lee's name tag, despite no character art showing in the title. Tekken Special would eventually find its own re-release, now named Tekken 3 Special, by simply adding the numeral to the right and pushing the title screen contents off-centre to the left. Game Tech, the Taiwanese developers, would have a number of other notable bootlegs in the era. Probably the most well-known for actually playing decently were Rockman X3 for the Mega Drive and the ridiculously named Super 1996 Sonic 6. Nowadays, they own the online bingo site Binking and no longer develop titles, so don't expect Fortnite or Minecraft of a PS2 from them anytime soon. While Tekken in its early years was officially exclusively associated with a Sony PlayStation at home, as time would go on for the Tekken franchise, it would soon become more than a PlayStation affair, with newer iterations featuring on the Microsoft and Nintendo systems, receiving animated and live action adaptations, and even featuring as a canonical crossover with Akuma from Street Fighter, which you can learn more about in the links below. Perhaps what's even more interesting though and pertinent to this video is that Tekken would eventually even have a proper 2D remake. Tekken Advance that would use sprites based off of the 3D models. I made a video on this GBA game a few years ago too if you want to check it out. Building on all of this weirdness, funnily enough with Sega exiting the hardware business at the turn of the century, Tekken would never be released on a Sega console officially, although the fighters would cross over in Project Cross Zone on the Nintendo 3DS and would both feature in various ways in Smash Bros games, so maybe Nintendo was the perfect middle ground to settle differences in this era. Anyway, if you enjoyed learning about these rather silly games, you might like this video I made on Street Fighter Alpha 2 for the NES. Cheerio!